There are several drugs under investigation for the treatment of COVID-19, but remdesivir has probably received the most attention. A few of you have asked us to talk about it, and we aim to please, so that's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Remdesivir is a broad-spectrum antiviral developed by Gilead Sciences, a United States pharmaceutical company, and was not actually created in response to COVID-19. It was developed just over a decade ago as a potential treatment for hepatitis C and was later tested as a potential treatment for Ebola. While it was essentially a bust in both cases, all the work to find that out also led to us finding out two other things relevant to the current pandemic. Remdesivir is the potential to work against coronaviruses and it's safe to use in humans. We know that it works by targeting a biological mechanism that some viruses use to replicate themselves inside the human body. That's why it has potential to work against more than one virus, because it doesn't directly affect any given virus, just the means by which that virus tries to take over. Research conducted in the last five years has demonstrated the ability of remdesivir to block coronaviruses from replicating in animals. A study out just this year demonstrates its ability to reduce disease severity, viral replication, and lung damage in monkeys infected with MERS, another coronavirus we saw back in 2012. Knowing all this saves us so much time in the drug development process. We've got a readily available and safe drug with definite potential, but that of course doesn't guarantee success. Remember, basic lab research and proof of principle work in animal models are required steps for all drugs to move on to clinical trials, where many of them fail. There's been a flurry of data, and we've picked out three sets that appear to be responsible for most of the chatter. One set comes from the maker of the drug, Gilead, who's conducting a study with around 6,000 patients from all over the world. So far, the data suggests that patients who are moderately ill, meaning they require hospitalization but not ventilation, recover more quickly on remdesivir than those receiving standard care. There isn't much else to say here because we don't yet have access to all the data or all the information about the study. All we know is the limited information released by Gilead so far, who stated in a press release that they will submit the full data set for publication. We do know that a placebo was not given in the study, so both patients and doctors knew who was getting the drug and who wasn't. This, of course, introduces a slew of confounds, so even with the full data set, we'd be feeling pretty cautious. The next set of data getting a fair amount of attention came from a study published in The Lancet on April 29th. It was a randomized controlled trial of 237 adults who received a 10-day course of remdesivir or placebo within 12 days of symptom onset. The results do not indicate statistically significant differences in time to clinical improvement in patients receiving the drug. There was some indication of decreased recovery time in patients treated sooner after symptom onset, but larger studies would be required to establish an effect because the study was somewhat underpowered. Unfortunately, well, for the study anyway, COVID infections were brought under control in China where the study was being conducted before researchers could meet their intended sample size. Fortunately, we do have some data from a similar but larger study from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. This study was also a randomized controlled trial and included over 1,000 adult participants from sites in the United States, Europe, and Asia. Preliminary results were published on May 22nd and indicated that individuals receiving a 10-day course of remdesivir had a median recovery time that was four days shorter than those receiving a saline placebo. Some data also indicate that the drug may be more effective the earlier it's given. This makes intuitive sense given that the drug works to halt viral replication. Its utility would likely decrease if it's given after the virus has already had the chance to significantly replicate. At that point, we're contending with other issues, including things like potentially problematic inflammation from the immune system's response to the virus. Lastly, and importantly, the data also indicate no significant difference in mortality rates between the drug and placebo groups. So, at the moment, it looks like it might be helpful in reducing recovery time under specific circumstances, but it can't be the only tool in our COVID toolbox. An Eli Lilly trial has begun testing an antibody drug developed specifically for COVID, and other trials are looking at the potential of various drug combinations. For example, one is currently underway to examine the effect of remdesivir alone versus remdesivir combined with an anti-inflammatory. So there you have it. The latest data on remdesivir. It shouldn't surprise you that this, like most things, doesn't appear to be a silver bullet. 
It has treatment potential, but we need more information, including on potential side effects. For now, the drug has been approved for emergency use in the United States, Japan, and India. The data should continue to pour in, and we'll continue to keep an eye on it and on data for other treatments, keeping you updated as we go. Hey, you enjoy this episode? You should check out last week's episode talking about coronavirus vaccines. We always like it when you like and subscribe down below. And we also like when you go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage help keep the show going, even in a pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Joshua Gister, and James Glasgow, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.